Welcome to Crimson Guitars and welcome to a... an experiment. I despise Wildwall. Despite the fact that one of the coolest experiences of my life involved Wildwall, at least from the point... I, I've never been cool. I am an uncool person, it's just the way it goes. Anybody who has to get tattoos on his head to try and be cool is trying too hard and is therefore just screwed. One day, um, I was using an angle grinder and uh, <laughs> I had wire wool on my workbench and the sparks set fire to the wire wool which is fine because it was smoldering away it wasn't, you know uh, I need to set it in for the grante which is a different thing and uh, so anyway I picked up one end of this ball of wool and walked outside and uh, my neighbour who was a fantastic stonemason looked up at the movement of me opening my door and walking outside and all he saw was me walk outside and throw a fireball out of the door because uh, fresh oxygen fire uh, I yeah I looked really cool for a minute anyway uh, that is <laughs> that was not the plan let me put my phone on silent I'm supposed to be filming something professionally here uh, anyway, I despise Wildwall, so I'm going to dissolve this in vinegar. May need to just get rid of it and dissolve it. But uh, the real reason, or the benefit, the side... I hate this stuff. The perk is that what I'm going to do, as I'm sure you have guessed, probably by the title of this video, I'm going to experiment with oxidizing an ash guitar body because a mixture of steel wool or nails, etc., and vinegar with a little bit of sugar because I stole this uh, kiln jar from the kitchen should, I am told, oxidize, or in other words, turn black ash and people have been saying that I they have a, a slight they're slightly worried about my uh, predilection for burning guitar bodies and as such I'm going to find a different way of turning it black a different cool way of turning it black the the nose of this bottle has been squished so this is going to go everywhere it didn't haha -ha. okay so what I'm going to do is pour that in Leave it for three days, two and a bit days, and then see what happens when we wipe it onto some ash. This is fun. You having fun? I'm having fun. Watch, I'm going to be in a completely different mood, slightly less caffeinated next time, and it's going to be like yeah, Hansel and Gretel, the Hulk, and the other one. <laughs> nobody, nobody remembers Eric Banner, do they? Anyway, uh, there we go. Experiment has begun, and uh, we will see what happens next. In a split second. Wow, okay. So it's mostly gone. Fun times. Well, here we have it. Okay, so essentially, it has actually been a lot longer than I'd planned. Uh, it's been something like 10 days now since I started filming this. It's been an interesting week. And I've also changed my mind as I always do. And instead of just testing this on ash, which is what I'm interested in, uh, I want to see what the difference is across a couple of different pieces of wood. So I've got ash, elm, oak, brown oak, uh, flame sycamore, although that'll wrap the same as maple, I'm assuming, and a small piece of bibinga just because it looked at me and said, me too. Uh, 
The other thing is, you'll notice that when I first started this, I shut the Kilmer jar, and uh, uh, two or three days later, it didn't appear to have had any effect. The, uh, uh, the wire wool or steel wool just wasn't dissolving or disintegrating in any way. I think that, so I, I opened it, left the top slightly ajar, <laughs> pun entirely intended, and uh, uh, every day or so I stirred it in and that worked. So the, the creation of the solution requires uh, oxygen, which is funny because we're doing a test with oxidation and oxy in this case is oxygen, therefore it's fairly obvious really. Okay, so I have a brush, I have some woods and I'm going to paint it and see what happens. I don't want to paint my plane. Cherry handles. I'm told that cherry oxidizes rather well. This has finish on it though, and I'm not going to do it. I wasn't even remotely tempted, honest. So here we are, some wood. Uh, let's start with the ash first. So essentially what we're doing is somehow the vinegar and steel wool is reacting with tannins inside the wood and uh, that turns wow look at that that's immediate oak is very very high in in tannins and uh, it creates well a black result straight away and different woods have different levels of tannin in them and that's why you get different effects and I'm sure I could have also created um, a much stronger or potentially weaker mix. Can you see that? Yes you can see that, that's the bubinga. I'm not holding out much hope for the bubinga but it said me too so there we go. Now, as a guitar builder, I'm very interested to see what happens with the, with the flame maple. I'm also interested to see how deep this goes. And this piece at the back here is some brown oak. Oh, the elm appears to be working quite well. The ash is not moving very much, and neither is the sycamore. So the whiter, lighter woods aren't doing very much. But that, straight away. Okay, I'm going to leave these to dry, and we will be back uh, when they dry. So I'm not sure when that'll be. And here we go. This is now... Uh, about half an hour or so later, I've gone and done some inlay work <laughs> where I left the brush on my uh, ash workbench is stained, uh, which is quite nice. So that's the difference. Uh, it did affect the elm rather well. It really affected the, the bubinga, although the bubinga is still, still wet actually, um, because it's a much denser wood, the, it's not penetrated. Uh, the water hasn't penetrated as much. And I assume that if I double dose this, it will work uh, even more. That is very black. I'm not sure what's up with this brown oak. It doesn't have a finish on it, but it isn't, uh, it's not done very much, has it? Um, I'm really impressed with how much uh, of a stain we've got with the, uh, with the flame sycamore. So yeah, the end results. It's fairly thick, it's fairly deep, it's penetrated rather well. And that's a, that's actually a rather nice colour. Uh, I think underneath a guitar finishing oil or something, that would do really rather well. So, uh, ha, crikey. What? Oak is the darkest, then Bubinga, who knew? I mean, that's, that's insane, I, I really wasn't expecting that. Um, although it hasn't penetrated as deep, 
then elm etc which i expected oak and elm to be similar the ash is quite a nice color although i think it's had more of an effect on the uh, on the maple which again i, I really didn't expect so uh, there you go i think this needs some more playing and a little bit more fun uh, what have we got tell you what i'm going to double dose this why not let's uh, let's see if we have any difference so i'm only going to do half put another coat on and we'll see what happens there And the brown oak, that's almost just a waste of time there. It just doesn't seem to be penetrating that for some reason. Okay, I'm gonna leave this to dry for a while and uh, be back soon. Well, wasn't that fun? So it has doubled the strength. This not quite dry on the, the flame maple, but th that brown, that is a very, very, very cool brown. Um, I'm... This, this bears playing with a whole hell of a lot more. Okay, so... Uh, fun times. Uh, <laughs> I really think I'm going to be playing with this more. I'm going to make up some different strength uh, concoctions. Uh, I'm going to use iron nails as well and uh, see what happens there. And I kind of wonder uh, what else we can do with, with this. Uh, a common, other common stains that people like to use not sure if you would call this a stain because it's a chemical reaction in the wood rather than physically using suspended particles to, to change the wood, which is, by the way, why I think this is a cool finish. Uh, it should give you a much more transparent, much more uh, 3D effect under finish. But, um, oh, I love that brown. That, that's, that's, a, that's a good color. And, oh, no, let's not touch the brown oak one. That didn't actually dry at all. Uh, there are various other things. So tea and coffee are used a bit. I think that's a little bit lame. Um, uh, it's, that's just something that's brown that is used to stain the wood. And this is cool because it's a, it's a chemical reaction. It's cool. It's physical. So there we go. If you have any ideas, please put them in the comments below. Uh, other products that you've used we are going to be playing we haha <laughs> i am going to be playing with uh, various bleaches as well to see what happens there uh, josh one of our apprentices has uh, been bleaching fretboards uh, with just normal household bleach so we'll do some experiments with that and uh, see what happens i'm uh, well there we go experimental luthery 101 fun times. What can I say? Please click like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I would appreciate it if you would consider supporting our Patreon. Uh, check the link below to see uh, benefits, etc. Uh, I personally really appreciate that. It's, it's helping us create all of these videos. And uh, yeah, most importantly though, please comment below. Ask me questions. Give me ideas. I feed off you. That sounds wrong. It's true. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. So, there we go. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> the temptation to put oil on all this wood right away is just insane. See you later.